Indie Mogul. Hey Indie Mogulers, on today's build episode, a new DIY video light. The most important ingredient in filmmaking is light. Without it, the camera can't capture your vision. The telltale sign of amateur video is grainy, low-light conditions. So where can you get good light? The sun is the brightest light most of us have access to, and it's free. That's why outdoor video always looks so good, and clouds are even better because they soften shadows. Regular indoor lighting usually isn't powerful enough for video, but indie mogulers don't want to spend $1,000 for one professional light. So we like work lights or clamp lights as cheap hardware store solutions. One of the lights I use is a clamp light, but I use this hilariously giant CFL bulb. It's as bright as six incandescent bulbs. For most of my shoots though, I use this DIY video light that I built for $60. It's pretty powerful, but I still need one more good light for a standard three-point lighting setup. When shooting a shot like this, the primary and most powerful light is the key light. The second light fills in the shadows, so it's called the fill light. And finally, the back light illuminates the edges to add dimension. I built my current DIY light by mounting a couple cake pans to the guts of a broken Loa light, which was nice because it included a light stand mount and umbrella holder. But for my new DIY light, I want to see if I can build this thing from scratch and improve on my previous design. So here's what I'm using. An aluminum cake pan with a plastic lid, a white plastic dish pan, four wired sockets and four socket splitters, eight 100 watt equivalent CFL bulbs, a wired on off switch, handle, flagpole holder, a blank plastic yard sign, silicon sealant, screws and nuts, and some wiring materials. The total comes to $86. $86? But Eric Beck built a light for half that price! I know, I know, but this design can output over six times as much light, and I like to think of my DIY projects as investments in my video business. Remember that $35 teleprompter I built? In just three months, that little device has earned me over $8,000. The aluminum pan will house the sockets, so I start by tracing four circles. After drilling pilot holes, I use a one and a half inch drill bit to cut the holes. You'll notice I'm cutting against a scrap piece of wood to give the drill bit something to dig into. These weatherproof sockets will fit nicely in each hole. I'll need a half inch hole for the on off switch, a hole for the AC power cable, and several screw holes to finish assembly later. These two pans will mount together, so I'm tracing the screw holes and socket holes onto the dish pan. And I'm using the flagpole holder to mount this whole thing onto a light stand, so now I'll trace and drill all the final screw holes, then cut a space around the sockets. Scissors would work too. With my last design, a lot of light is wasted because it isn't directed forward, so that's why I'm using a white dishpan to bounce the light and better protect the bulbs. The flagpole holder is secured to the dishpan with screws and nuts, and this works surprisingly well because it has a locking adjustable tilt and it tightens really well onto a light stand. Now I'll connect all the wires. Again, don't do this unless you're familiar with electrical systems. First, I'll run the AC cable, which is not plugged in right now, through the bottom hole. I'm attaching the green ground conductor to the metal pan and the black hot conductor to the switch using some electrical tape and a wire guard. I'm cutting four short wires. Using one, I'm pairing these two neutral socket wires into one conductor, and I'm pairing the rest of the socket wires the same way. I've done this so I'm not shoving too many wires into each wire guard. This leaves me with two hot wires to connect to the switch and two neutral wires to connect to the white neutral conductor from the AC cable. Now that it's wired up, I'm adding a ring of silicone around each socket. When this dries on both sides, it'll hold the sockets firmly in place so I can finish the build. Six screws attach the two pans, two screws to add a handle on top, and two more to secure the plastic lid in place. I'm using socket splitters because they're cheaper and easier than installing four more sockets and I'm hoping that by installing the bulbs at an angle, more light will shine forward. Be gentle when handling CFL bulbs, and you should screw them in by the base, or this could happen. Ah, CFLs contain a small amount of mercury vapor, so if one breaks, you should air out the room for a few minutes, then seal the bulb in a container, and find out how CFL disposal is handled in your community. These eight 23 watt CFL bulbs output the equivalent of 1360 watt incandescence, but only use one quarter of the power. 
Bulbs come in different color temperatures. Indoor light is often yellow in color, and sunlight is much bluer, which is why we set white balance, to tell the camera what color we're shooting in. You know your white balance is wrong if your outdoor shot is blue, or if your indoor shot is yellow. These colors are measured in degrees Kelvin, from 2700 for a yellow incandescent bulb, to 6500 for bright blue sunlight. These colors actually represent what lead looks like when heated to these extreme temperatures, which is why we call it color temperature. All of my bulbs are 5000 degrees Kelvin, which mixes nicely with sunlight. Finally, to shape the light, I'm adding barn doors, by cutting a plastic outdoor sign. I'm using scrap coaxial cable as hinges. I learned this technique from Eric Beck's DIY light build, and I'm covering them with gaff tape, which is non-reflective. Alright, let's find out now if it works. Here's how the brand new light compares to a single 60 watt incandescent, compared to my giant CFL bulb, and compared to my last DIY light. So even though it uses only 8 bulbs instead of 9, the new light is actually half a stop brighter because of the improved design. I put a hole through the middle of the light so I can mount an umbrella. This diffuses the light, the same way clouds soften sunlight. You can see it in the shadows, which become blurrier. Generally, faces look nicer with soft shadows. A small light bulb creates harsh shadows, and so does the sun, because it takes up little space in the sky. So the more you spread out a light, the softer it becomes. So my DIY light is naturally soft because it has many bulbs. The dishpan design makes it easy to clip on wax paper, which is a decent, cheap diffuser, and gels, which can create cool effects. But is anyone wondering if all these light bulbs will melt the plastic pan? I worried about that, so I measured the temperature of the bulbs, which, at their hottest, get to around 137 degrees Fahrenheit. Polypropylene plastic melts at about 250 degrees, so it's not a problem. That's the great thing about CFL bulbs for video. You can handle your lights without burning yourself, and any time I've used non-fluorescent video lights, the room heats up, and everyone gets uncomfortable and sweaty. So there you have it, a powerful DIY video light for under $100. Right now I'm working on a new test film using this DIY light, so stay tuned for that in the next week. You can also check out Eric Beck's $43 light build, and if you like what you see, please subscribe to Indie Mogul for more DIY filmmaking tips.